Case is a special grammatical category of a noun, pronoun, adjective, participle or numeral whose value reflects the grammatical function performed by that word in a phrase, clause or sentence. In some languages, nouns, pronouns, adjectives, determiners, participles, prepositions, numerals, articles and their modifiers take different inflected forms, depending on their case. As a language evolves, cases can merge for instance, in ancient Greek, the locative case merged with the dative case, a phenomenon formally called syncretism. English has largely lost its case system although personal pronouns still have three cases, which are simplified forms of the nominative, accusative and genitive cases. They are used with personal pronouns, subjective case I, you, he, she, it, we, they, who, whoever, objective case me, you, him, her, it, us, them, whom, whomever and possessive case my, mine, your, yours, his, her, hers, its, our, ours, their, theirs, whose, whosever. Forms such as I, he and we are used for the subject, I kicked the ball, and forms such as me, him and us are used for the object, John kicked me. Languages such as Sanskrit, Ancient Greek, Latin, Armenian, Hungarian, Hindi, Tibetan, Assamese, Czech, Slovak, Turkish, Tamil, Romanian, Russian, Polish, Croatian, Serbian, Estonian, Finnish, Icelandic, Belarusian, Ukrainian, Lithuanian, Basque and most Caucasian languages have extensive case systems, with nouns, pronouns, adjectives, and determiners all inflecting usually by means of different suffixes to indicate their case. The number of cases differs between languages, Esperanto has two, German and Icelandic have four, Turkish, Latin and Russian each have at least six, Armenian, Czech, Polish, Serbo-Croatian, Ukrainian and Lithuanian all have seven, Sanskrit has eight, Estonian has fourteen and Finnish has fifteen, Hungarian has eighteen and Tsez has sixty-four. Commonly encountered cases include nominative, accusative, dative and genitive. A role that one of those languages marks by case is often marked in English with a preposition. For example, the English prepositional phrase with his foot as in John kicked the ball with his foot might be rendered in Russian using a single noun in the instrumental case or in ancient Greek as toy potty, toy potty meaning the foot with both words the definite article and the noun poos, poos foot changing to dative form. More formally, case has been defined as a system of marking dependent nouns for the type of relationship they bear to their heads. Cases should be distinguished from thematic roles such as agent and patient. They are often closely related, and in languages such as Latin, several thematic roles have an associated case, but cases are a morphological notion, and thematic roles a semantic one. Languages having cases often exhibit free word order, as thematic roles are not required to be marked by position in the sentence. History It is widely accepted that the ancient Greeks had a certain idea of the forms of a name in their own language. A fragment of Anacreon seems to prove this. Nevertheless, it cannot be inferred that the ancient Greeks really knew what grammatical cases were. Grammatical cases were first recognized by the Stoics and from some philosophers of the Peripatetic school. The advancements of those philosophers were later employed by the philologists of the Alexandrian school. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The English word case used in this sense comes from the Latin casus, which is derived from the verb cadere, to fall, from the Proto-Indo-European root asterisk cod. The Latin word is a calque of the Greek tosis, tosis, lit. Falling, fall. The sense is that all other cases are considered to have fallen away from the nominative. This picture is also reflected in the word declension, from Latin declinere, to lean, from the pi root asterisk clay. The equivalent to case in several other European languages also derives from casus, including cas in French, caso in Spanish, and casus in German. The Russian word padez is a calque from Greek and similarly contains a root meaning fall, and the German fall and Czech pad simply mean fall, and are used for both the concept of grammatical case and to refer to physical falls. The Finnish equivalent is sija, whose main meaning is position or place. <laughs> Indo-European languages 
Although not very prominent in modern English, cases featured much more saliently in Old English and other ancient Indo-European languages, such as Latin, Old Persian, Ancient Greek, and Sanskrit. Historically, the Indo-European languages had eight morphological cases, though modern languages typically have fewer, using prepositions and word order to convey information that had previously been conveyed using distinct noun forms. Among modern languages, cases still feature prominently in most of the Balto-Slavic languages except Macedonian and Bulgarian, with most having six to eight cases, as well as Icelandic, German and modern Greek, which have four. In German, cases are mostly marked on articles and adjectives, and less so on nouns. In Icelandic, articles, adjectives, personal names and nouns are all marked for case, making it, among other things, the living Germanic language that could be said to most closely resemble Proto-Germanic. The eight historical Indo-European cases are as follows, with examples either of the English case or of the English syntactic alternative to case. All of the above are just rough descriptions, the precise distinctions vary significantly from language to language, and as such they are often more complex. Case is based fundamentally on changes to the noun to indicate the noun's role in the sentence, one of the defining features of so-called fusional languages. Old English was a fusional language, but modern English does not work this way. <laughs> modern English Modern English has largely abandoned the inflectional case system of Proto-Indo-European in favor of analytic constructions. The personal pronouns of Modern English retain morphological case more strongly than any other word class a remnant of the more extensive case system of Old English. For other pronouns, and all nouns, adjectives, and articles, grammatical function is indicated only by word order, by prepositions, and by the Saxon genitive. S. Taken as a whole, English personal pronouns are typically said to have three morphological cases. The nominative case subjective pronouns such as I, he, she, we, used for the subject of a finite verb and sometimes for the complement of a copula. The oblique case object pronouns such as me, him, her, us, used for the direct or indirect object of a verb, for the object of a preposition, for an absolute disjunct, and sometimes for the complement of a copula. The genitive case possessive pronouns such as my, mine, his, hers, ours, used for a grammatical possessor. This is not always considered to be a case, see English possessive section status of the possessive as a grammatical case. Most English personal pronouns have five forms, the nominative and oblique case forms, the possessive case, which has both a determiner form such as my, our, and a distinct independent form such as mine, ours with two exceptions, the third person singular masculine and the third person singular neuterate, which use the same form for both determiner and independent his car, it is his, and a distinct reflexive or intensive form such as myself, ourselves. The interrogative personal pronoun who exhibits the greatest diversity of forms within the modern English pronoun system, having definite nominative, oblique, and genitive forms who, whom, whose, and equivalently coordinating indefinite forms whoever, whomever, and whosever. Though English pronouns can have subject and object forms he, him, she, her, nouns show only a singular, plural and a possessive, non-possessive distinction e.g. chair, chairs, chairs, chairs. Note that chair does not change form between the chair is here subject and I saw the chair direct object, a distinction made by word order and context. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hierarchy of cases. Cases can be ranked in the following hierarchy, where a language that does not have a given case will tend not to have any cases to the right of the missing case. Nominative accusative or ergative genitive dative locative or prepositional ablative and or instrumental others, this is, however, only a general tendency. Many forms of Central German, such as Colonian and Luxembourgish, have a dative case but lack a genitive. In Irish nouns, the nominative and accusative have fallen together, whereas the dative locative has remained separate in some paradigms. Irish also has genitive and vocative cases. In Punjabi, the accusative, genitive, and dative have merged to an oblique case, but the language still retains vocative, locative, and ablative cases. Old English had an instrumental case, but not a locative or prepositional. <laughs> case order 
The traditional case order was expressed for the first time in the art of grammar in the 2nd century AD. Latin grammars, such as Ars Grammatica, followed the Greek tradition, but added the ablative case of Latin. Later other European languages also followed that Greco-Roman tradition. However, for some languages, such as Russian or Latin, due to case syncretism the order may be changed for convenience, where the accusative or the vocative cases are placed after the nominative and before the genitive. For example, <laughs> Case concord systems In the most common case concord system, only the head word the noun in a phrase is marked for case. This system appears in many Papuan languages as well as in Turkic, Mongolian, Quechua, Dravidian, Indo-Aryan, and other languages. In Basque and various Amazonian and Australian languages, only the phrase final word not necessarily the noun is marked for case. In many Indo-European, Finnic, and Semitic languages, case is marked on the noun, the determiner, and usually the adjective. Other systems are less common. In some languages, there is double marking of a word as both genitive to indicate semantic role and another case such as accusative to establish concord with the head noun. Topic: <laughs> Declension paradigms. Declension is the process or result of altering nouns to the correct grammatical cases. Languages with rich nominal inflection use grammatical cases for many purposes typically have a number of identifiable declension classes, or groups of nouns with a similar pattern of case inflection or declension. Sanskrit has six declension classes, whereas Latin is traditionally considered to have five, and ancient Greek three declension classes. For example, Slovak has 15 noun declension classes, 5 for each gender. The number may vary depending on which paradigms are counted or omitted. This mainly concerns those that modify declension of foreign words, refer to article. In Indo-European languages, declension patterns may depend on a variety of factors such as gender, number, phonological environment, and irregular historical factors. Pronouns sometimes have separate paradigms. In some languages, particularly Slavic languages, a case may contain different groups of endings depending on whether the word is a noun or an adjective. A single case may contain many different endings, some of which may even be derived from different roots. For example, in Polish, the genitive case has a, u, au, i, y, e for nouns, and ego, ej, ik, ych for adjectives. To a lesser extent, a noun's animacy or humanness may add another layer of complexity. For example, in Russian, kot nom, animate, zero ending, love it mysedge the cat catches mice, stolb nom, inanimate, zero ending, derzit krisu the pillar holds at the roof versus peter gladit coda acc, animate, a ending, peter strokes at the cat or peter is stroking at the cat and peter lomat stolb acc, inanimate, zero ending, peter breaks at the pillar or peter is breaking at the pillar. Topic Examples Topic Belarusian An example of a Belarusian case inflection is given below, using the singular forms of the Belarusian term for country, which belongs to Belarusian's first declension class. Krina nominative, the country. As a subject, e.g., Jeta Krina Nahajika U Europe, this country is located in Europe. Krani genitive, the countries, of the country, e.g., Eurad Niederlandau Nahajika U Gaz, Ale Stalika Krani Amsterdam, the Dutch government is situated in The Hague, but the country's capital is Amsterdam. Krane dative, to, for the country. As an indirect object, e.g., Novij Krain ne Zostalosa Niaki Prirodni Rezisau, there was no natural resources left for the new country. Krainu accusative, country, as a direct object, e.g., A Casta Nevedvau Jetu Krainu, I often visit this country. Krainaj instrumental, with the country, by the country, be a country. E.g., Singapore Bu Bidnaj Krainaj Singapore was a poor country. Ukraine locative. In the country, as a direct object, e.g., Ukraine ne hapai easy, there is not enough food in the country. 
Topic: <laughs> German. In German, grammatical case is largely preserved in the articles and adjectives, but nouns have lost many of their original endings. Below is an example of case inflection in German using the masculine definite article and one of the German words for sailor. Der Seemann nominative, the sailor, as a subject, e.g., der Seemann steht da, the sailor is standing there. Der Seemann es genitive, the sailors of the sailor. E.g. der Name des Seemanns ist Otto, the name of the sailor is Otto. Dem Seemann e dative, to, for, the sailor, as an indirect object, e.g. Ich gab dem Seemann ein Geschenk, I gave a present to the sailor. Den Seemann accusative, the sailor, as a direct object, e.g. Ich sah den Seemann, I saw the sailor. Topic. Greek. Modern Greek has four cases, nominative, genitive, accusative, and vocative. For neuters and most groups of feminines and plural masculines, the genitive case differs from the other three. Below is an example of the declension of oranos sky, which has a different form in the singular of all four cases, together with the appropriate article in both the singular and the plural. Nominative omicron oranos Oi uranoi genitive tu orano Tun oran an accusative tun orano Tus oranus vocative oranae, uranoi ancient Greek had one additional case, the dative. At some point, it was replaced with the preposition ice, followed by the accusative. This became necessary when pronunciation simplified, merging the two long vowels eta and omega to short. The result was that dative did not sound much different from the accusative in the singular of the first two groups. However, the dative case is still used in many expressions. With time, only the sigma of ice was left and got attached to the article, except when an article is not used and it becomes say instead. Note that this is not a different case from the accusative. Below is an example with the dative case of the word pole city. Nominative ate a pole Oi polis genitive tes poles Ton polian dative te pole Tis polesi accusative ten pole Tis polis vocative pole Topic. Japanese Cases in Japanese are marked by particles placed after the nouns. A distinctive feature of Japanese is the presence of two cases, which are roughly equivalent to the nominative case in other languages, one representing the sentence topic, the other representing the subject. The most important case markers are the following Nominative ga, ga for subject, ha wa for the topic Genitive no, no Dative ni, ni Accusative wo, wo Lative he e, used for destination direction like in to some place Ablative kara, kara used for source direction like in from some place Instrumental da, da. Topic. Korean Cases in Korean are marked by particles placed after the nouns, similar to Japanese. Like Japanese, the nominative case has two distinctions, one representing the topic of a sentence and the other the subject. In informal speech, nominative, i ga and un, noon and accusative, eul lul particles are often omitted, while dative aga and ablative isio are shortened to simply e, if the meaning of the sentence can easily be inferred from context. Most common case markers are the following. Nominative i, ga i, ga for the subject, un noon un, noon for the topic. Genitive ui, ui, although transliterated as ui, nowadays it is pronounced the same as e. Dative ega, ega, hante hante. Accusative aul, lul aul, rule. Lative e, e, used for destination direction, like in, to some place. Ablative eseo, eseo, used for source direction, like in, from some place. Instrumental lo, ulo ro, uro. Vocativa, ya, ya. Topic. Latin An example of a Latin case inflection is given below, using the singular forms of the Latin term for cook, which belongs to Latin's second declension class. Cocus, nominative, the cook, 
As a subject, e.g., cocus ebi stat, the cook is standing there. Koki genitive, the cooks of the cook. E.g. nomen coqui Claudius est, the cook's name is Claudius. Coquo dative, to, for the cook, as an indirect object, e.g. coquo donum dedi, I gave a present to the cook. Cocum accusative, the cook, as a direct object, e.g. cocum vidi, I saw the cook. Coquo ablative, by, with, from, in the cook. In various uses not covered by the above, e.g., sum altior coquo, I am taller than the cook, ablative of comparison. Coke vocative, you the cook, addressing the object, e.g., gratias tibiago, coke, I thank you, cook. Topic: <laughs> Latvian. Latvian nouns have seven grammatical cases, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, instrumental, locative and vocative. The instrumental case is always identical to the accusative in the singular and to the dative in the plural. It is used as a freestanding case without a preposition only in highly restricted contexts in modern Latvian. An example of a Latvian case inflection is given below, using the singular forms of the Latvian term for man, which belongs to the first declension class. Nominative, veers. Genitive, vera. Dative, virum. Accusative, viru. Instrumental, r viru. Locative, vera. Vocative, veer. Lithuanian In Lithuanian, only the inflection usually changes in the seven different grammatical cases. Nominative Vardaninkas, suo, tai yra suo. This is a dog. Genitive Kilmaninkas, sons, Tomas Pam sons kala. Tom took the dog's bone. Dative Nodaninkas, suniui, jis dave kala kitam suniui. He gave the bone to another dog. Accusative Galaninkas, suni jis nupras suni. He washed the dog. Instrumental Inagininkas, Sunimi, Gs Sunimi I Gastino Kates, he scared the cats with using the dog. Locative Viatininkas, Sunijay, Susatiksame, Baltame Sunijay, we'll meet at the White Dog Cafe. Vocative Soxmininkas, Suni, Gs Sasuko, A, Suni. He shouted, Hey, dog. Topic. Polish An example of a Polish case inflection is given below, using the singular forms of the Polish terms for human chilowiec, and monkey malpa. Nominative mianonik, chilowiec, malpa. Genitive dopelniec, chilowieca, malpi. Dative salonik, chilowiecawi, malpi. Accusative biernik, chilowieca, malpa. Instrumental narzednik, chilowiecium, malpa. Locative Maskonic, Chileveku, Malpi Vocative Wolas, Chileveku or Chilewis, Malpo Topic <inaudible> Hungarian Hungarian declension is relatively simple with regular suffixes attached to the vast majority of nouns. The following table lists a few of the many cases used in Hungarian. Romanian Romanian is the only modern major Romance language with a case system for all nouns, whereas all other Romance languages dropped the cases for nouns replacing them by prepositions. An example of Romanian case inflection is given below, using the singular form of the word boy. Biatul nominative, the boy, as a subject, e.g., biatul a stat acasa the boy stayed home. Biot accusative boy as a direct object e.g. L and Vizuta Sierra pay biot I saw the boy last night Biotului genitive the boys of the boy e.g. bicicleta Biotului sa strikat the boy's bike broke down Biotului dative to the boy e.g. I am dat un cadu Biotului I gave the boy a gift Biote vocative boy e.g. Stai a casa, biate. Stay at home boy. Topic. Russian 
An example of a Russian case inflection is given below with explicit stress marks, using the singular forms of the Russian term for sailor, which belongs to Russian's first declension class. Morik nominative, the sailor, as a subject, e.g. Tam Stoit Morik, the sailor is standing there. Morik a acute genitive, the sailors of the sailor, e.g. Sin Maraka, Hudaznik the sailor's son is an artist. Maraku dative, to for the sailor, as an indirect object, e.g. Maraku Potarili Potarak, they someone gave a present to the sailor. Morik a acute accusative, the sailor. As a direct object, e.g., visu maraka, I see the sailor. Marakam instrumental, with, by the sailor. As a direct object, e.g., druzu s marakam, I have a friendship with the sailor. O na v marak prepositional, about, on, in the sailor. As a direct object, e.g., dumao o marak, I think about the sailor. Up to ten additional cases are identified by linguists, although today all of them are either incomplete, do not apply to all nouns, or do not form full word paradigm with all combinations of gender and number, or degenerate, appear identical to one of the main six cases. The most recognized additional cases are locative, v lesu na mastu v sleza partitive, kao saharu pesku in two forms of vocative, old, gospody bos oche and neo vocative. Mas papriba sometimes, so-called count form for some countable nouns after numerals is considered to be a subcase. See details. Topic: <inaudible> Sanskrit. Grammatical case was analyzed extensively in Sanskrit. The grammarian Panini identified six semantic roles or karika, which by default are related to the following eight Sanskrit cases in order. For example, in the following sentence leaf is the agent karta, nominative case, tree is the source apadana, ablative case, and ground is the locus adhikarana, locative case. The declensions are reflected in the morphemes at, am, and o respectively. However, the cases may be deployed for other than the default thematic roles. A notable example is the passive construction. In the following sentence, Devadatta is the karta, but appears in the instrumental case, and rice, the karman, object, is in the nominative case as subject of the verb. The declensions are reflected in the morphemes ina and am. Assamese Assamese has ten cases. Tamil. The Tamil case system is analyzed in native and missionary grammars as consisting of a finite number of cases. The usual treatment of Tamil case art in 1942 is one in which there are seven cases, nominative first case, accusative second case, instrumental third, dative fourth, ablative fifth, genitive sixth, and locative seventh. In traditional analyses, there is always a clear distinction made between post-positional morphemes and case endings. The vocative is sometimes given a place in the case system as an eighth case, but vocative forms do not participate in usual morphophonemic alternations and do not govern the use of any postpositions. Modern grammarians, however, argue that this eight-case classification is coarse and artificial and that Tamil usage is best understood if each suffix or combination of suffixes is seen as marking a separate case. Telugu. <inaudible> <inaudible> Telugu has eight cases. Topic: <inaudible> Evolution. As languages evolve, case systems change. In early ancient Greek, for example, the genitive and ablative cases became combined, giving five cases rather than the six retained in Latin. In modern Hindi, the Sanskrit cases have been reduced to two, a direct case for subjects and direct objects and an oblique case. In English, apart from the pronouns discussed above, case has vanished altogether except for the possessive, non-possessive dichotomy in nouns. The evolution of the treatment of case relationships can be circular. Adpositions can become unstressed and sound like they are an unstressed syllable of a neighboring word. A postposition can thus merge into the stem of a head noun, developing various forms depending on the phonological shape of the stem. 
Affixes can then be subject to various phonological processes such as assimilation, vowel centering to the schwa, phoneme loss, and fusion, and these processes can reduce or even eliminate the distinctions between cases. Languages can then compensate for the resulting loss of function by creating adpositions, thus coming full circle. Recent experiments in agent-based modeling have shown how case systems can emerge and evolve in a population of language users. The experiments demonstrate that language users may introduce new case markers to reduce the cognitive effort required for semantic interpretation, hence facilitating communication through language. Case markers then become generalized through analogical reasoning and reuse. Topic: <laughs> Linguistic typology. Languages are categorized into several case systems, based on their morphosyntactic alignment how they group verb agents and patients into cases. Nominative accusative, or simply accusative, the argument subject of an intransitive verb is in the same case as the agent subject of a transitive verb. This case is then called the nominative case, with the patient direct object of a transitive verb being in the accusative case. Ergative absolutive, or simply ergative, the argument subject of an intransitive verb is in the same case as the patient direct object of a transitive verb, this case is then called the absolutive case, with the agent subject of a transitive verb being in the ergative case. Ergative accusative, or tripartite, the argument subject of an intransitive verb is in its own case the intransitive case, separate from that of the agent subject or patient direct object of a transitive verb which is in the ergative case or accusative case, respectively. Active stative, or simply active, the argument subject of an intransitive verb can be in one of two cases, if the argument is an agent, as in, he ate. Then it is in the same case as the agent subject of a transitive verb sometimes called the agentive case, and if it is a patient, as in, he tripped, then it is in the same case as the patient direct object of a transitive verb sometimes called the patientive case. Trigger, one noun in a sentence is the topic or focus. This noun is in the trigger case, and information elsewhere in the sentence for example a verb affix in Tagalog specifies the role of the trigger. The trigger may be identified as the agent, patient, etc. Other nouns may be inflected for case, but the inflections are overloaded. For example, in Tagalog, the subject and object of a verb are both expressed in the genitive case when they are not in the trigger case. The following are systems that some languages use to mark case instead of, or in addition to, declension. Positional nouns are not inflected for case, the position of a noun in the sentence expresses its case. Adpositional, nouns are accompanied by words that mark case, with a few exceptions. Most languages in the Uralic family make extensive use of cases. Finnish has 15 cases according to the traditional understanding or up to 30 depending on the interpretation. However, only 12 are commonly used in speech see Finnish noun cases. Estonian has 14 and Hungarian has 18, both with additional archaic cases used for some words. Some languages have very many cases. For example, Tsez, a Northeast Caucasian language, has 64 cases. The original version of John Cuyada's constructed language Ithkal has 81 noun cases, and its descendant Alox and Ithkal after the 2011 revision both have 96 noun cases. The lemma form of words, which is the form chosen by convention as the canonical form of a word, is usually the most unmarked or basic case, which is typically the nominative, trigger, or absolutive case, whichever a language may have. See also Agreement – Linguistics Case hierarchy Declension Differential object marking Inflection List of grammatical cases Phi features Thematic relation Verbal case Voice – Grammar Notes <laughs>